I'm a native of Idumuju now, uh, the son of uh, late pa Henry Okudugabadi. Okay. So much has been said, we witnessed a lot of uh, philanthropy just today. What would you say, and this seems not to be the first time, what informed that disposition? Well, um, like I said in the field, um, our father have taught us how to live a selfless life, uh, not to withhold good if it's in your power to do. He has inculcated that uh, um, policy in our life and uh, we have no choice than to sustain such a legacy, such his lofty idea and belief. So that is the driving force. We want to keep the lifestyle of our father alive, keep whatever he believes in alive because we love him so much. So that is just the basic factor behind all this foundation and what we are doing today. I saw a cluster of friends around you, and most of them, from the conversation we had with them, most of them were of the opinion that this is not just, though you have uh, political friends, that this communists majorly from your disposition as an individual, not as much as a politician. How would you describe that? They're absolutely right. I, I, as a matter of fact, lately I've been telling people that, uh, like, and I also said it in that field today, that I wish, um, I wish I have all it takes to say yes to everybody that comes across my way. I will, ha I will not have any reason to join politics. Um, my reason of joining politics is um, purely because of my town. I love this town so much. I felt we don't have a voice. We don't have somebody that can represent us and help us bring development to the town. Even though presently the state, um, yes, uh, Ko, I must commend him, he has been bringing development in terms of road to our community, you know. And um, yeah, so he's doing that. But we also pray that uh, in terms of appointment that he's going to increase it. So basically, um, it has nothing to do with politics. Whatever we are doing has absolutely nothing to do with politics. It's born out of genuine mind and um, the lifestyle of our father, keeping the legacy of our father. And that is evidenced in uh, what you saw today. Most of the people that uh, were beneficiaries today were entirely not politicians. You know, they, they are people that are indigent, that deserve it, a square peg in a square hole. We give them the people that need it genuinely. You know, it's all about empower them, lift up their life and made their life better. So it has no political connotation, as a matter of fact. That was right. This, as it's been mooted, this is not a new... You've been in the forefront or in the committee of people trying to governize communality within the community, starting from 1990s, where you had the, uh, what is it, the believers, whatever fellowship like they still have today. What is informing your disposition towards Idumujunos re-emancipation? Like I said, I, I was born here. I passed through the crucibles here. The town is uh, it's my town that I love so very much. I keep telling people that if it's possible, if, if uh, there's nothing I cannot do for the, this town. The town is my town. I love this town so very much. And uh, uh, you can see poverty very uh, uh, visible in the town. And uh, so uh, we need to help one another. We need to make this town to lift up. And the only way we can do it is to live a, self a selfless life, empower people, try to help. Don't be selfish in your approach, however little you can. Like I said uh, the other time, also that um, if they begin to count the richest people in the moon, I may not even be among the forties. You know, before you can't above forty before you can count me. But I said it also in one of the interviews. I said I don't want to be remembered as a very rich man. I don't want to be remembered by saying this is the mansion that he built or he that man that drives the best of cars. I try to live a modest, as modest as I can be. That is a very unassuming and modest life. But my passion is that if I have. 10 naira, for instance, I should be able to give at least 15 naira or, or 5 naira, you know, half of it to help the people. Because I discovered that uh, it's safer for me, it's better for me. The environment becomes better. If somebody is, uh, yeah, they said uh, um, an, a hungry man is an angry man. If you abuse and I give you, you know, you are empowered. You go, like those people who game motorcycle today. If they're driving and make, trying to make uh, ends meet with it, if they call them for any violence or for anything that is criminal, they may not have the chance to do that. So those are the things. Before you know, you begin to, it also kills some societal ills. Because when you are busy, you won't be occupied with uh, any devilish thoughts. So my passion and what is driving is purely my dream for Idumu Juna is that I will see one day when we we'll see skyscrapers built by people. We we'll see 
you know, massive development by people. I want to do people to be rich. I want them to be self-sufficient. It's my dream. I'm going to continue to sustain it. And by the grace of God, um, sooner, very, very soon, we will begin to see the light. This one thing at a time. On a lighter note, as an individual, this is not the first time you've done it last year, you're doing it again this year, and with all disposition, you're likely doing that continuously. As an individual, what are the dispositions, the conflict that goes in the conventional humanity's mind? Should I, should I not? How do you battle with those? <laughs> it has never. There's no, there as a matter of fact, and uh, I also want to say, as a matter of fact, that, uh, you know, when God gives you a vision, he gives you somebody that will compliment it. I must say that my wife is a wonderful woman. You know, that maybe that is where discouragement would have come from. But, you know, she encourages me to do it. She, whatever, at whatever magnitude she, but not only does she back it up with prayer, she encourages me because she knows that uh, maybe that is my calling. So I've never had a double mind. I have never, nobody have ever approached me, whether in this town or in the local government or in Portaco where I stay, and uh, ask me for something and I'll begin to say, should I give or should I not give? It has never, it has always been a push of give and give and give. And honestly, it gives me joy and uh, I'm not going to relent in it. Pulling it towards politics now, I, we have encountered a lot of political war with within and beyond the, the local government. They all seem to have affinity of one in, indication of you that you seem to be disposed to developmental politics. What goes on in your mind when you envision politics? Well, I, I, you know, when a machine was saying it today, if you remember, a machine was saying that this is a challenge to them, especially them that are, I, I, I don't know, I entirely would not want to be addressed as a politician. You know, I, I am more of um, a normal human being than a politician. I play politics without sentiments. I play politics with a broad mind. I don't have divide in politics. Uh, I have discovered one thing that is giving me a lot of concern in annual channel politics, uh, politics of self, self, self. Police of it must be me, my bag or my pocket must be full before I can remember another person. You know, playing with the intelligence of people, you gather them after, you know, during the election, you throw all the carrots that you can on them, you make friends, even those you cannot ordinarily, you know you cannot make friends, you begin to live a false life to gain their vote. As far as I'm, co I'm concerned, that is defrauding. You, you are not genuine, your intentions are not genuine. And what is prevailing now is after election, you don't see them again. Those people you crawl to their night, to the houses at night, suddenly becomes, you begin to see fault in them. And those faults, you were not seeing them when you were coming to the house. So I need to advise them that they need to, if the politicians who are even being empowered by the government can do what I am also doing and do it in a higher um, um, magnitude, I can tell you that uh, uh, poverty will be eradicated. So my uh, position of politics that people should play politics, people s should see politics as a call to service. You should serve people. And uh, as a matter of fact, it's, um, there's no credential that is greater than that when you become selfless in politics, when you try to serve people. And I don't see politics as an avenue to amass wealth. I don't see it. As a matter of fact, um, there are other avenues that genuine businesses we can do. So politics should be seen as call to service. Yeah, you should be remunerated. Wherever somebody is working, definitely you must you must uh, put food on the table. But you know the greed in politics of annual channel, the greed and the selfishness of politics of annual channel has to be um, uh, discouraged. I must tell you. And uh, the another syndrome of my my enemy's friend is my enemy. You know, you, you transgress, you know, you, you, you elongate, you try to prolong your enemies, you begin to accumulate in enemies in politics. To me, it shouldn't be so. If I don't work for you today, does not mean I'm not going to work for you tomorrow. So, that is my perception about an That's like the, the, drawing the drones back home now, how would you describe a an channel, the cluster of politicians, heavyweights and all of that interrelatedness? You did mention turn towards the affinity with other politicians. How would you describe generally the annual channel politicians? I, I, I've just told you and I'm still saying it I'm in front of camera. I don't know the press you represent. I don't always know, but I'm saying that I'm not impressed. I don't see anybody I should be impressed on for now. I don't see. Maybe in terms of development, I don't see. You know, the beyond development there should be human relationship. 
I think that they should be, you should be in touch with your base. You, you are not there as our master. Don't do a higher than life attitude and begin to see a boss disposition. So I think that is what is drastically, you know, obviously missing in Nigerian politics, and your channel politics. You, you climb up there, you forget that you climb through people's ladder and you begin to be um, the Lord over there. Your world is power. You know, you nobody, you don't listen to anybody again. You don't consult anybody. You begin to segregate, you begin to do divide and rule. To me, that's a very bad approach to politics and it should be discouraged when i aspired in 2018 i, I made a point even in this town let me not even go there in this town there are friends I, I belong to pdp proudly pdp i'm a leader of pdp in this town <clears throat> but uh, i also have friends and even family relatives who are in apc i don't i don't antagonize them i don't make them my enemy all of them come to my house here they drink i go to the house i visit them because if you're in PDP today does not mean you cannot be in APC tomorrow. If you're in APC tomorrow, does not mean that you're, in, you're not going to be in PDP tomorrow. So to me, it's a freedom of choice. But your relationship, the way you lay with people, can make them to have a change of mind. So those perceptions need to change in the nature. Now, as a Christian, as an individual, and as a politician, how have you been able to marry the difference between politics, administration, and humanity? They're actually supposed to be the same thing. Politics is... Uh, is government is just to bring government to the people. That's all about politics and uh, all human about service. Politics is all about service, serve the people. It's uh, it's not about self and uh, humanity also. Human service is all about individual. I mean, a human being. So they're supposed to be. But the difference, why we are seeing a a distinct between the two of them is uh, the way our politicians behave. They they have you know elevated it from service to um, mastership and. Uh, to me, that's not the way it's supposed to be. You know, when you bring down yourself and you serve them, you represent them well, you listen to their yearnings and their aspirations, you see the ones you can do, you do. The ones you cannot do, you improve on interpersonal relationship. An interpersonal relationship is all about humanity. Uh, if you come to my house, for instance, and uh, you meet me sick, if you don't have the money, but you pray for me, to me, you have added value to my life. You understand me? But when I call you on phone, before now, before uh, election, when I call you, people, when you enter now, it's when you become unreachable, you are too busy not to answer your, your, the people you represent. That is where that distinction comes. Otherwise, they are, they are just the same thing. Finally, sir, the Idemujuno that has been your passion, how do you see Idemujuno in the next couple of years, going by the search as the effort you're putting into doing the basic you can to ensure Accelerated development. I, 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 said it, I said it earlier, it's my dream that uh, Idumu Juno, and uh, I mean every word of it, Idumu Juno, in another few years, there's going to be drastic change. As the Lord lives and uh, as He empowers me also, today is motorcycle. Tomorrow we could see people setting out. It's not impossible to set up industries for Idumu Jai people. So there's going to be um, a, a massive improvement and um, um, enrichment among uh, members that is on, on my personal ground politically also like i said we've been neglected in terms of appointment in terms of this and uh, um, we have also decided to come together you know and speak as a voice speak as one voice uh, drop self drop that same spirit of selfishness and uh, and ask ourselves what do we want and once we identify our direction we'll move with it once we identify also our mission what we want what are our needs we'll move with it in one voice and uh, you can see the youth that came in here the leaders of vibrant people that you know that are grassroots politicians and begin to mentor them and begin to change the perception of what politics should be i mean to also tell them that we need to also find a trade because part of this thing that is happening to them is uh, over dependence on government is also one of the things that is bringing frustrations among them, you know, and that is why somebody with all sense of modesty, somebody like me should be able to air my view too modestly and tell people what I feel. And because I'm, I'm sure you are not, uh, by the grace of God, I'm not going to be uh, punished, uh, you know, by withdrawing my source of livelihood. So we know, you know, the, the, the new vision is to begin to tell them to, to look beyond politics. I don't make politics a hobby. What are you doing? I'm a politician. You can only be seeing those ones in our Here, you need to fend for yourself. Uh, then play the politics so that when you play, you not say that you are going to be moderate in all the things you do, and you're not going to be so desperate. Because we are desperate over things, um, the the possibility of making mistakes are there. So 
in a nutshell and in summary, I can assure you that you do Muje, come next year, <laughs> when you come for the empowerment program that my father's legacy foundation is going to do, it's going to be much, much higher than what we do. And the time we come, maybe cars will be involved. We can power people with cars, we can set up industries. There's nothing God cannot do. He has given us the empowerment, He has given us the enablement, and we're only praying that God should give us also all that it takes to sustain it. Because we know that right in the grave, my father is smiling and he's happy with uh, what his children is doing. Finally, sir, what goes on in your mind when you see an Idumuje man or woman prosper? And your final word of encouragement to Oh, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't mention, you can't even measure the joy. When I see a young man that prospers, I feel so happy. I see, because after step poverty, I also know what it means to be poor. After step poverty, I know the pains that is associated with poverty. So when I see somebody doing well, honestly, whether I do Muja or anywhere, I associate with sources. I, I feel happy if it's somebody that is, I also feel challenged. I want to get closer to you. I want to know how, you know, if I can learn good things from you. So um, it's a good thing. And that is my prayer that you do people should keep prospering. Uh, there's a, a proverb in our place now, Galanyo Fuonye Boafufu. So when everybody have, there is peace. <laughs> there is peace. I, I go to your house. It's also, it's not everybody. I can also be in need. My need may not be actually finance. My need may be somebody running. I may be in Botakwa and say, can you please help me go to Dumujuboko? There's a problem of 50,000 that you can sort. Um, in the evening, I'm going to transfer the money back to you. If he doesn't have it, that problem is going to remain there. So it's my dream that everybody should be happy. Everybody should be successful. Everybody should be rich. Everybody should be comfortable. And it will not, you know, transcend into also a, a happy environment. A little drop makes a mighty ocean. We look forward to seeing how much God has shown His power between now and the following year and the preceding years. Thank you so much. Thank for you being so here. much. God bless. Thank you.